If we have an overactive system, a highly inflamed system, if we have an overactive mind, if we have anything like that going on, it can be all but impossible to actually meditate, do some mindfulness work. So don't beat yourself up if you're going, Sharon, I've tried that, it didn't work. It's okay. Give yourself space and grace. Cue music. Places, everybody places. We're starting in three, two. Welcome to the Autoimmune Hour, where we look at the rise of autoimmune disorders. I've brought together top experts that range from doctors, specialists, nutritionists, researchers, and even those recovering from autoimmune to bring you the latest, most up-to-date information about autoimmunity and how to live your life uninterrupted. Thank you for joining us here on the Autoimmune Hour with Sharon Saylor. Always seek sound legal, medical, and or professional advice regarding any problems, conditions, and any of the recommendations you see, hear, or read here on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio. Join the Autoimmune Hours Courage Club. Sign up now at understandingautoimmune.com. Now, back to your host, Sharon Saylor. Welcome, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com and, as always, from understandingautoimmune.com. And it's my honor and pleasure to be with you here on another brand new episode. We're mixing it up a little bit. For the first time in over a decade, we're not having a guest. I'm just going to give you my top 10 tips for the things I've learned over the last 10 years of doing the Autoimmune Hour, plus You know what? We're right about that anniversary date of my first diagnosis. And (laughs) well, I won't say my first diagnosis. One of my tips is all about understanding your medical history. So we'll get into that (laughs) because oddly, there were diagnoses all the way back years, decades ago before I got the actual, what I'll call the big diagnosis. How's that? (laughs) So Anyway, I hope you've got a cup of tea. I've got my cup of tea here and we'll be enjoying it together. And thank you for being here and let's get started. I did write some of them down, so sorry about that. I'm just trying to sort through my favorite ones. And the first one that comes to mind is one of those big ones and because it's important, but it's often overlooked and completely misunderstood. And I am still figuring this one out. We've had numerous nutritionists on the show. So the first one is, I say, adopt an anti-inflammatory diet. And people are like, what's that mean? The problem and why it's so crazy making is it means something different to everybody. It's all based on our lifestyle, our genetics, all sorts of things. So we can't just say, boom, eat these 25 things and you'll be perfect, right? That's the crazy thing about it. So there are certain ones that you can get tested for. You can get tested for food sensitivities in a variety of ways, as well as you can also know yourself. Like, Does it give you an upset tummy when you eat it? I've talked to a few people who say shortly after eating with XYZ, I get a runny nose. I thought that was interesting too. Okay, maybe there's something inflammatory about whatever you were eating there. And so there's so many diets to try and understand. Like I said, it can be crazy making. At one point I got down to, I I know it was under 10 foods that I was eating and that can't be healthy. It wasn't healthy. And so as I began to explore it and do some of the testing and diagnostics for understanding what I could eat and what I couldn't eat, a few things I found was to mix it up. Don't eat the same thing over and over and over again. I haven't had them as guests on the show, but I've talked to various people who one woman only ate rice and a couple of other things. Now, I'm not saying that rice is bad. For a lot of people, it's not. Some people, it might be. But it was that she was eating under five things day in and day out for a long, long time. And my goodness, that just frightened me because what nutrients are you missing out? (laughs) And there is also some research that shows if you eat the same food over and over again, you begin to build up sort of a tolerance to it. And so you wouldn't want to get to a little cheek or some apples and butter response to one of the five things you're eating, right? Now, I found a wonderful website, and this isn't sponsored at all. I, I really should reach out to them and have them on the show because I found their website so fascinating. It's called whatthebleepdoieat.com. 
And you can put it in there and whether you want anti-inflammatory or gluten-free or oxalate-free or lectin-free, just this whole long list, you can check them off <laughs> and then it will come up with foods that are in the positive categories. Like if you're wanting gluten-free, it will show you a whole variety of foods that are gluten-free. And I just found that so delightful <laughs> <laughs> in what some ways a little distressing because it's like, wow, I didn't know that was one of those food groups or whatever. I, so it's, there's so many things we can learn about anti-inflammatory diets. But uh, like I said, I'll reach out to him and see if we can have him on the show. But I found that a fun site to help me understand the things I could eat. We've also had all sorts of nutritious. We just had VJ Hamilton on and we've had Sally Norton on the Oxalate Diet the anti-oxalate diet <laughs> gal. And so just a ton that I'm blanking on several of the others we've had, but just go th through going understanding autoimmune.com, go through there and search for nutritionists and you'll see a whole variety of shows on there to talk about that. And so the number one thing that I have found that has helped me the most is understanding my diet, what I can eat, what I should stay away from and what I can eat in limited amounts. See, that's the thing. Some people say, yes, no, black, white. Nope. There are some foods that you can eat in limited amounts. And so it's not all about, oh, woe is me. I can't eat anything. Because one of the things is we have to keep our body strong. That's the way it heals, right? So anti-inflammatory diet is number one for me. Let me bring up my notes here again. And then let's see. Number two, I took about managed stress. I did not realize 10 years ago when I got diagnosed the stressful life I was leading. I realized I was on the road over 200 days a year. I love the corporate training work that I do besides this podcast. I absolutely adore my clients and I love traveling to meet them and seeing wonderful, exciting places. Yet I didn't realize the toll it was taking on me. Flights here and there, lack of sleep, sleeping in different places, not being able to sleep, which by the way, sleep is one of my top 10 things here, but we'll get to that in a minute. So manage stress. Although one of the things I learned about managing stress, you'll often find in just the regular types of conversations with people about stress, they'll say, oh, meditate, mindfulness exercises, things like that. You know what? If we have an overactive system, a highly inflamed system, if we have an overactive mind, if we have anything like that going on, it can be all but impossible to actually meditate, do some mindfulness work. So don't beat yourself up if you're going, Sharon, I've tried that. It didn't work. It's okay. Give yourself space and grace, maybe just 10 seconds at a time just to stop. <sighs> Take a couple of nice deep breaths, let it go. Yeah, sometimes that's all you need. Other times go out for a walk, hug a tree, find a, a beautiful flower garden and just spend some time in it, observing the butterflies and the bees. Sit by the ocean is one of my favorite ways to relieve stress. So just find the way that works for you and give yourself permission to do it. Too often I find that we're in such a state of busyness, helping others, helping family, work, et cetera, that we don't realize how much stress we're under until we actually do take a few moments for ourselves. And I know the first few times I started doing that, I really had a hard time relaxing because I didn't know what it felt like to relax anymore. I had totally forgotten what it felt like to have a stress-free body. And remember, it's also anti-inflammatory because when we relax, our body goes out of fight, flight, or freeze or deep stress and goes into rest and digest. And rest and digest is where healing happens. So my second tip is adopt a life of where you're managing stress. Ideally, we'd like to be stress-free, but hey, I'm a a mom, a grandma, a working woman too. I get it. That's probably not going to totally happen. So give yourself space and grace and give yourself a big hug too. Something about those big hugs are awesome. So give yourself a big hug too. Let's jump forward to number three. And that's where I say prioritize sleep. Sleep's really hard sometimes when you're feeling 
maybe your body hurts, you've got inflammation, it even hurts to just lay flat, let alone walk or move. Maybe you've got nerve pain. There are a lot of autoimmune conditions that have nerve pain, that have stomach pain involved with them. So I get it. Sometimes prioritizing sleep is really hard. But I found finding a sleep pattern that works for you and understanding the circadian rhythms, wherever you are with that, look up circadian rhythms and figure out which ones work for me. My best one is if I'm in bed between 9 and 10 p.m., I know that sounds so old fogey, doesn't it? <laughs> but for me, I found the best if I'm in bed by 9 or 10 p.m., I have some time to read. And yeah, I don't, for once I don't, because sometimes I do. We have to give ourselves space and grace. I try to read paper books with a light because there's a lot of science out there how the light of our screens can really mess with all the sleep hormones and really dysregulate our sleep. So prioritize your sleep. Make it a ritual, maybe a bath before bed, an Epsom salt bath before bed. Maybe just a sipping on some nice water. I know <laughs> you probably want to stay away from anything else because they have found that if you eat too close to um, sleeping, also your body's too busy, busy digestion and can't go into relaxing. So take that into account too. So many tips, so many ideas. And also we had Michaela Giles on a couple of weeks ago now, and she talked about if you wake up at you know, 2, 3 a.m. continually like clockwork, that's an issue with your cortisol and need to relax stress because cortisol is the stress hormone. So if you're consistently waking up in the middle of the night for a reason that you're like, I don't know why I'm waking up, sometimes pain will wake you up, got it. Sometimes having to use the restroom, got it. But if you're consistently waking up about that three o'clock time every morning, you might want to consider why your cortisol is spiking and go back to step number two about managing stress. So also check out Michaela Giles there. Uh, I think it was a couple of weeks ago we had her on the show and she gave some awesome tips for us to understand all about managing our stress response. So Anyway, let me see, where are we now? Those are my top three. I had to take notes because I had so many things I've learned. We've done, I think this is episode 485, if I'm not mistaken. So that is just a lot of learning. And then I had to prioritize all these. Okay, if somebody asked for just one, what would it be? And definitely that was the anti-inflammatory diet. But uh, let me bring up my next one here. Oh, yeah, number four. I have to admit this one, I've had to really discipline myself because it's not something that I get it at the intellectual level, but at the motivation level, get regular exercise at the motivation level. It's hard. I get it. There are some days, you know, some days I can get all the way through my to-do list and other days I'm just happy that I made a cup of tea. So I get it. But any exercise helps. It really keeps the joints lubricated. It keeps us fluid and flexible. And the body really does need to move. It was built to move. So even if you have limitations in your movement, there's always certain things that you can do. And so anytime, Beth Martin was on the show all a few months ago, and she even talked about visualizing moving. So say you've got a condition that you're saying, Sharon, movement is not easy can't do it right now. I always like to say right now, by the way, or not yet, because that leaves open the possibility that leaves open to our unconscious mind and our manifestation mind. We can maybe, if I say not right now or not yet, or soon, I'd be able to, leaving open the possibility of healing. And I'm going to go tangential, as you guys know. (laughs) <laughs> I don't do it just with guests, right? I do it here. But this possibility of healing concept is really important to me because when I was diagnosed 10 years ago, I was given a set of stats that were scary, 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 awful. And pretty much you're going to be like this the rest of your life. You're just going to go downhill from here. It's too bad. So sad. What a shame. But there was nobody offering me hope. You know what? Within three years, I was off a lot of the awful meds. I was definitely in remission and I was definitely on the road to healing. 
And that was three years into my diagnosis. Here we are at year 10. And while I know I'm not healed, I don't really care. I'm doing really great. And in so many ways, I'm healthier than I was before the diagnosis, which, yeah, you're going, duh, Sharon, that makes sense, obviously, because <laughs> what got you there didn't happen overnight. It's not like something you catch and you wake up in the morning sick. The thing about autoimmune conditions is they creep up on us slowly and we may not notice them or we may get used to them. Maybe you have a slight nerve pain or maybe you have a slight stiffness in your hands and you just kind of like, oh, I just got to keep on going and you get used to them. You make those little things your new normal. And then all of a sudden you're surprised by a diagnosis. But I like to say, why are you surprised? If you think in hindsight, it probably been creeping up for quite a while, right? But let me get back. You can tell me how much I avoid. I am not naturally doing exercise. But I have found going out and walking is one of the things I love to do. I love to call up friends, go out for a walk, do anything like that. I love walking in nature most, but sometimes that's not possible. So it's just around the neighborhood. And that's great too. And I like walking alone too. That's fine. I have found that audiobooks or listening to music, something like that, speeds up the time in my brain about my exercise. So doing anything like that, you can yoga. Swimming is great for a lot of people. So yes, you've got to have access to a pool or a lake or something like that. But all of those sorts of things. So just make a list of what you like to do, what you used to like to do, maybe. Maybe you're like Sharon. I haven't thought about exercise in years, something that I can do consistently. Make a list of what you used to like to do and how can you incorporate little bits of that into your new system and maintaining something day in and day out. And some days for me walking, some days I can make it around the block and I'm happy and other days I can make it several miles and I'm happy. But just getting out there and having that consistent habit is important. And speaking of walking, and right now where I live, it's in the hot of the summer, stay hydrated. We had Dana Cohen on years ago. We're going to have her back on because she has a brand new book coming out in September. So yay, Dana. I'm really excited. She's going to be on in for, for pretty soon for us to, to talk about all the new stuff she's learned about hydration. But go back and look up Dr. Dana Cohen if you want to see that show, the All About Hydration but stay hydrated and talk to professionals about do you need electrolyte supplements or anything like that? What things should you stay away from? And also avoid the sugary drinks because they actually dehydrate you. And one thing I learned recently was they actually tend to dry out your mouth, which can cause dental disease. So it's just, oh, just one more thing, right? <laughs> But anyway, that's one of the things that I think is critically important is stay hydrated. And it's not about one big drink going away for three hours and then coming back and having another great big drink. I found it easiest to have a big bottle and just sip it through the day. It's really easier to get it. And But I have one of those bottles that's marked with how much is in there. That way I can keep score. <laughs> I was doing it with unmarked bottles for a long time. And I never was really paying attention. I don't know. Maybe it's the competitiveness part of me. But I liked seeing the water go down on the line. I'm like, yes, I'm getting all the water I need every day. So check in with your healthcare professional and find out the best ways to hydrate yourself. But I say stay away from the sugary drinks because they definitely not only spike your um sugars in your body, which can mess up with your digestion and your detoxification as well as we get older weight, right? <laughs> I know they taste good, but treat yourself every so often. I'm not saying I'm not one for absolute elimination of most things, because I think after a while, if we feel that we're depriving ourselves of something, I don't know about you, but I tend to binge then. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to do as much as I can, moderation, and be very mindful about it. So when I make the choice, I make a conscious choice, not an unconscious choice to have something, right? And then after dehydrated, that's number five. My goodness, we're just blowing along on these. Number six 
is similar to the anti-inflammatory diet. And I guess I should have put it higher up the list because it could be sort of an addendum to <laughs> number one. It, number six is focus on your gut health. They say an interesting thing. They always call the gut the third brain or is it the second brain? I can't remember, but they're saying that there's three brains. And the gut really talks a lot to the brain. And I recently learned that this nerve does this two-way communication. Usually nerves go from the head down and then sometimes go back up to the body. But this nerve goes all the way through the gut and it goes back up to the brain telling like a two-way telegraph. I found that so fascinating that it's not just the brain telling the gut what to do, like time to get the food in here, time to digest. It's a two-way communication. So the brain knows what's going on and the gut knows what's going on. So that really makes sense about all the times we've heard about trust your gut, what's your gut saying, those sorts of things are really true. <laughs> so that's a tangential thing I'll get into in a second, because one of them I didn't put on the list, I really should have, and it's called trust your gut. So many times I've been in situations where some uh, something was recommended to me, and I'm just like, mm, I'm glad it works for you, but not for me, that's just not my thing, or something about it, it just is telling me it's not right, including meeting new medical professionals and going, you know what, I don't think this medical professional is for me. That's great. I like to say I fire them, but that's a little bit strong. I just say thank you and I'll take my leave. <laughs> I'll find someone else that's more in a line with how I want to live, more in line with respect for my choices. I personally find it hard who's someone who's very dictatorial, the finger wag, you need to do this, that, this and that, and then scolds you if you don't. I really want a team member. So you guys can choose the kind of person you work best with and thrive best with. But I say, you know what, trust your gut on all things like that, on healing modalities, on team members, health team members, suggestions from other people. Gosh, I don't know how many times I get from other people just either walking down the street or in, in casual conversation trying to give me health suggestions. Some may be good and some may not. So trust your gut, okay? But let me go back to gut health really quickly. I find that understanding your food allergies, and we talked about that in the anti-inflammatory diet, but understanding that the rest and digestion part is critical to our healing. If we never focus on our gut health and the microbiome and what are we putting into our gut, is it healthy? Sometimes probiotics work for some people, so check with your healthcare professional, do you need those? There's actually tests you can take that will tell you what you need. So check with your healthcare professionals on those sorts of things, as well as allowing your gut just to relax. You can't digest if you're in a constant state of frantic movement. Frantic, I got to get my to-do list done. You can see how these are all intertwining, right? There's focus on your sleep. We talked about rest and getting into rest and digest. And here in gut health, to have healthy gut microbiome, we have to get into rest and digest. We have to be able to relax, as well as sometimes medications will disrupt our gut microbiome. So ask your medical professionals if any medications you're taking or they want you to take, how it interacts with your gut health because that's critically important too. Oftentimes the gut health is overlooked, but for me, that was one of the major things that helped me heal, was really focusing A, on nutrition, the anti-inflammatory diet for me. And the anti-inflammatory diet is not like a single diet. It differs with your body, as I said early on. And then just getting a healthy gut, a gut that can digest easily and comfortably and understanding how the digestion process works, that it you really just don't put in food minute after minute all day long. There is a process and a rhythm to our body. So find the, your process and your rhythm and flow with that. That's when your gut will become healthy. Or sometimes. <laughs> gut is really involved in autoimmune diseases. So it's important to focus on that as well. And I want to make sure that we have time. We need to take a quick commercial break and thank our sponsors for today's show. It's so important. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed to YouTube channel yet, please do so. It's at Understanding Autoimmune. I would really love it. We're trying to grow the show. We've been doing the show for over 10 years. And one of the things I would love to do is continue to grow YouTube. For the longest time, I, 
I was having trouble getting the videos edited to a quality that I wanted. But now with all the new technologies, it's so much easier for me to get videos out there. So if you're on YouTube, please subscribe and share the show and the channel with others because we really need to get this message out that you are not your diagnosis and you are not alone. So we'll be right back after this quick commercial break. The Autoimmune Hour will return after these messages from our sponsors. It's great sponsors like these that keep this show coming to you every week. Be sure and stop by understandingautoimmune.com to learn more. Ohm Times TV Imagine becoming a super influencer. Reinvent yourself, invest in your brand, and then manifest your success with a robust spheric approach. Ohm Times Media and Broadcasting offers a unique and multifaceted way to become the spiritual and conscious influencer you deserve to be by putting your message across our powerful platform with its proven record of integrity and excellence. Through our produced shows, Ohm Times offers the opportunity to become a social media TV personality, a radio show host, an Ohm Times Magazine columnist, and a syndicated podcaster, all in one shot. By live streaming your show on Ohm Times TV and broadcasting it across the extensive Ohm Times radio and TV networks, you become more than a host. You become an ambassador and a force for positive change. Ohm Times, open yourself to the possibilities. If I could be you, and you could be me for just one hour. If we could find a way to get inside each other's minds. Walk a mile in my shoes. Walk, Walk a, a mile, mile in my shoes. shoes. Well, before you abuse, criticize, and accuse. Walk, Walk a mile in my shoes. Welcome back, everyone, to the Autoimmune Hour. I'm Sharon Saylor from SharonSaylor.com and UnderstandingAutoimmune.com, as you know. And thank you for being with me here tonight. It's just me tonight sharing my top 10 tips that I've learned about recovering from autoimmune. And since it's the 10th anniversary of my diagnosis, I thought, what better time to talk about it? I've loved doing the show. I've got 400, and I think this is 485 shows out there where we've talked about all manner of things. It's just been amazed to me how much I've learned and the wide variety of healing that I've done that I didn't think was involved with autoimmune at all. And so number seven, see, some of these are a hard time when you have to number things, because I think this one's critically important, is two parts. The first part is understand yourself. And the second part is advocate for yourself. Now, remember, we just talked about trust your gut. That's part of understanding yourself. But one thing I've learned, and I learned this, I think, in about year four, year five of the show was the importance that our past history, medical history, trauma history, school history, all sorts of things plays into how we got where we are. It's amazing to me that how past traumas stick in our body. If you haven't yet, and I haven't ever had him on, I would love to have him on. And that's Dr. Bezel von der Kolk has a wonderful book called The Body Keeps the Score absolutely love that book because it talks about trauma and how it gets stuck in our body and can play into our health either if we manage it well getting well or if our body's keeping all the score on these past traumas and hurts and things that happen it can keep us in a condition of less health and so i found that book so fascinating to understand how even things that aren't like bumps and bruises but our traumas from the past, terrible, scary things or something like that, get stuck in your body. It's fascinating. I've told this story on the show before. Years ago, I had uh, a massage therapist and she'd been working with me for years. And so she knew me pretty well and knew my body pretty well. And I kept coming and complaining about my shoulder. <laughs> and finally, one day she said, we've worked on the shoulder for a while. And I just have to tell you, if you just take that knife out of your back, you'd be fine. 
And I had to stop and I was in shock and it made so much sense because at the time I was going through something where I felt I had been stabbed in the back by someone. And, you know, I had to work through that and deal with that and come to terms with that and release it. And then, you know what? My shoulder got better. Now, I'm not saying that's everybody's shoulder problem. You can definitely have injuries, et cetera, et cetera. But it's just one of those things to think about, like, are there other underlying issues besides the actual physical manifestation? And we've had Sarah Payton on the show numerous times. And one of our favorite topics is unconscious contracts. And these are the kinds of contracts we make with ourselves and other people. Sometimes they can be like, I'll stay quiet and keep myself small so my parent won't, won't uh, yell at me. We make that an unconscious contract as a child. And yet it doesn't serve us as an adult, yet we're still running from that same contract, still operating from that same contract. So those sorts of things are really important to know. And if this sparks an interest with you, go to understandingautoimmune.com and search for Sarah Payton, P-E-Y-T-O-N. And You'll love all of those shows we've done with her because understanding how we resolve and work through our past traumas and how that plays into healing our body is one of the key components in my healing. That was a huge aha moment for me. You can also check out Dr. David Clark we had on the show, amazing man, a retired gastroenterologist who talks about the same thing about our gut holding tight and how holding our trauma, sort of swallowing our problems, you ever heard that phrase, can keep us from healing in the way we want to heal. As well as there again, Michaela Giles and Jessica Jimison from Origins Collaborative Care have been on the show. They talk about that too, plus so many others, because I'm fascinated about the deep healing of trauma and understanding that. I think I made it number 10. We'll talk about some more about that. Understanding yourself and advocating your, for yourself, being able to set boundaries, even with medical professionals. I know white coat authority was a big thing for me. And yet the day I finally said to a very well-respected and I'm sure great person, but we just didn't get along. We didn't see eye to eye. It was their way or the highway kind of person. And I really wanted to know why am I doing this? What can I expect as results? What else should I know about this? I really wanted to know a lot. I don't like to be surprised with my health. <laughs> when you get an autoimmune diagnosis, sometimes that's the biggest surprise. And then you need to know, what am I going to do with this? So advocating for yourself, learning to set boundaries is really important. Like I say on the show, I don't really fire them, but I have been known to fire doctors. Now, I don't like get mad or anything like that, but thank you very much. <laughs> And that's not for me. Thank you very much. Walk out the door and find someone else who's more aligned with your philosophy of healing. And the more we take control of ourself, it's interesting to me, the stronger we get, the less stressed we get, and the more we can set boundaries, which is part of advocating for ourselves. Know what you want and stand up for it, okay? That's critically important. Okay, so that's all about number seven. Number eight, I want to read it here because I want to make sure I get them all right. I wish I could memorize these things, guys. I don't, but let's, let's just play. Number eight, I wrote down is consider alternative care. And that could be anything from acupuncture to massage to physical therapy to getting a walking buddy, okay? <laughs> but consider alternative therapies and care. Yes, the allopathic medicine is good. And yes, there are also natural ways, naturopathic doctors, massage therapists I mentioned, acupuncture I've mentioned, all sorts of other ways. Sometimes even therapy is good because there is a lot of trauma in a diagnosis. I remember when I heard the word of my diagnosis and I read the body language of the doctor whose head was down and didn't want to make eye contact with me, it's one of these reading the paper. She knew what it said. Why'd she have to read the paper? She didn't want to make eye contact with me because she didn't want to tell me the bad news. That's pretty traumatic. So sometimes the therapy or grief counselors, those sorts of things. So consider alternative therapies that can help you. And there's also things like functional medicine too, just throwing these all ideas out there. And 
just sit with yourself a little while, explore them, research them, and see which one resonates with you and trust your gut. Remember we talked about trust your gut. Let's see, what else did I say? Oh yeah, I wanted to talk about dietitian, nutritionists, things like that, critically important to add to your team. So make sure you have a well-rounded team. And I like to call my team my team because it takes more than one in my mind to understand all the nuance of what's going on with you. Because a lot of times I've found, and this is not a bashing, it's just something I found, that if you get a specialist in one specific thing, they know that a lot. They know that really, really well. But they might not know what the other thing is, <laughs> or this thing is, or they might diminish that thing, like poo-poo it, or whatever it is. And for myself and for a lot of people I've talked to in these over 400 episodes, autoimmune is kind of like medical whack-a-mole. It is really hard to diagnose one specific thing. And I have found, and the research bears this out, that if you have one autoimmune, you probably have another one or so more. So to be aware of that, because one thing I learned early on was explained to me that autoimmune conditions are hard to diagnose because so many of the symptoms are similar. So imagine like a space, a river that was described to me as like a river of symptoms that are all very similar, like joint pain, muscle weakness, headaches, fatigue, those sorts of things, right? And it's not until you get a symptom that creates a big wave, either up or, or down. They said, I don't know what kind of wave would go down, but whatever. They were describing this river and you get a big wave of a symptom that really screams one specific diagnosis or maybe two, but it really, you have to wait for this blip before you can really get a definitive diagnosis. And that is so frustrating at times, but sometimes just knowing that it's probably an autoimmune condition. There's so many interventions you can do without an actual 100% diagnosis. Remember, I said the anti-inflammatory diet, proper sleep hygiene, managing your sleep, cool rooms, fans in the room if you want, but make sure it's not over your head because sometimes that dries out your eyes. I'm going tangential again, aren't I, guys? <laughs> but consider alternative care and build your support network. And that's really important. And I see those two combined, but the Build Your Support Network is also community such as the Courage Club on understandingautoimmune.com or you know, watching our show or other shows. There's many, many great shows out there about healing modalities. And sometimes just knowing that you're not alone, like you're not the only one going through it is helpful. I know that seems really counterintuitive, but for me, it was helpful when I found out, oh, you grieve too? Okay, so that's not abnormal to grieve, right? So it's important to understand that uh, a nice support network is very helpful. However, I want to put a great big asterisk there. Make sure it's a positive support network. I have found many support networks, and I'm not going to name any, but they're out there, and you've probably fallen into a few, that are one big dark hole of woe is me, and everybody's in the woe is me, and they just keep digging, as my friend Don would say. He says, if you're in a hole, quit digging. And I have found some support communities are not so supportive. How do we enhance our life? How do we encourage others? How do we move beyond this? How do we grow? Even if it's just like one little step at a time, how do we change our situation for the positive? How do we maintain hope and faith, right? So while support networks and communities are incredibly helpful, choose wisely. And if it doesn't feel right, back to trust your gut. If it doesn't feel right, thank them, bless them, and move on and find your spot. That's critically important for me is building a support network. And I feel I have it here on Understanding Autoimmune. I get so many wonderful emails. And when I can help, I absolutely love to find someone. <laughs> I've been known to find a few experts and have them on the show just to answer very specific questions. I find that absolutely wonderful. And I think having a support network, even if it's family and friends, although I have to say sometimes family and friends do their best to understand. But honestly, if you haven't been in our shoes, they don't really understand why you were able to say, yes, I can go to the 
um, farmer's market with you tomorrow or Saturday or something like that. And then Saturday comes and you realize, you know what, my muscle weakness is back or my stiff joints are back or I know it's too hot outside and the heat will affect me. And you have to say no. Sometimes people who haven't gone through that, haven't walked in your shoes, don't quite understand, even if they try to understand. You need to love them and bless them and thank them. And finding a support network where someone who knows what you're going through is helpful. Because sometimes it just confirms your sanity. And sometimes we need that, <laughs> definitely need that. And so that was number nine. And I want to jump to number 10 before I run out of time here on the clock. <laughs> I'm so enjoying this. I think maybe we'll do more of those. If you want more of those, please leave some comments saying what you'd like <laughs> to, to share and talk about. And maybe I'll do some more of these ones. I have to tell you though, secretly, I really was scared to do this alone. I ta really talked it myself into it. I thought about calling a few of my friends like Bab Martin, Sarah Payton, <laughs> Liberty Forest. I mean, I can just go on the list. I just went down the list and I said, no, Sharon, you know, one of your biggest fears. And I know it's funny because I interview all of these people every week, every Friday at 7 p.m., right? But one of my biggest fears was, can I do it alone? Can I share what I've learned over the last 10 years alone? <laughs> So I know I'm not alone because you're there. If you are there, please share in the comments that you're there. I'd love to know that you're there. I try to respond to all the comments. And if I don't, please don't take it personally. Sometimes life intervenes. But um, I really appreciate you being part of my community. Uh, I want to talk about number 10. And I really, I had like 15 or 20 of these things. And number 10, I find important and... Um, now, way and a little scary. Oh, when I learned all about it, we had uh, Sharon McGrill on. She's been on a couple of times. You can, it's M C R I L L, Sharon McGrill. Check her out at understandingimmune.com and look for her because she really gave us a couple of two or three great shows on reducing environmental toxins. I was so surprised at how many things really can interrupt our healing, interrupt our endocrine system, can cause inflammation and can keep us sick. And they're like hidden, absolutely hidden. And never before in the history have we had so many chemicals, so many artificial things out there. And even in our diets, I want to go back to number one about the anti-inflammatory diet. One of the things through the 10 years I've learned is about processed foods. And when you read the back of those, how many things there are really are not healthy or can are known disruptors of our systems, of our digestive systems. So that's really important to know. We'll have uh, some other experts on because one of the things I wanted to talk about besides the sugars, as I mentioned, the refined sugars, things like refined oils and all of those sorts of things I'm learning more and more about that can really be disruptive to our healing process. And like all things in moderation, but just to be aware of it and to be aware how your body responds to it. Your friend's body might not respond the same way. That's what's so fascinating and difficult about an autoimmune diagnosis. One person's diagnosis, the word may be the same. Let's say lupus. Lupus is in with one person and you're going to be talking to that person and they're having a completely different experience than you. So that's why I say it's important to have a, a good medical team behind you to help you understand all these little nuances of what works for you best. I wanted to talk about these environmental toxins because it's not just like, as I mentioned, the chemicals and the processed foods and oh, all those sorts of things that we have to be mindful of and what can our body take and what can't our body take, but also things like mold. Wow. We had Maria Fadiman on. She is an amazing woman. And this was a few years ago that we had her on and she's a national geographic explorer no botanist at no botanist <laughs> that's a little hard to say and then she came on and she is an amazing woman i have to have her back on it's been a while since she's been here and oh my goodness i'm thinking of all these people we have to have back on right <laughs> Because I, I want to catch up with them. I find it so fascinating. So anyway, she ha had exposure to toxic mold in her home. 
And yet she is still able to go out into different jungles of the world and do her work, this amazing work she does in helping indigenous people. So it's an amazing job. But she's even with a mold toxicity problem, she's able to regulate her system enough that she goes out into all these amazing places. I just find it fascinating. And we have also had mold experts on. I, let me back up a little bit. I like those a survivor to thriver stories like Maria's. I love those stories. So if you have some ideas or you have your own survivor to thriver story, throw it in the comments and let's chat. And so we've also had mold experts on talking about how do you know you have mold? How do you know that it's mold that could be harming you? And how do you eradicate it? <laughs> and so those are really ty types of things to think about is are there environmental toxins in my home? In my greater world, do I do I live in a place with high air pollution or not? Can it even be it? And I know a few years ago, we had a lot of wildfires where I live. Oh my goodness, I was so glad that I had a home that has all sorts of protection mechanisms in it that I could breathe air without all of that environmental smoke. That was just crazy. And so uh, being prepared would be my last one. I get, We had another 11. <laughs> It's like, know yourself and be prepared for it. <laughs> be prepared. Oh, my goodness. It's been so great. I really appreciate all of you. I'm going to sign off now. That's my top 10. Don't have a whole lot else to share besides my top 10. But do share in the comments if you have others that came to mind or if you have a favorite show or a favorite guest that you want to be on the show. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe. We really appreciate it. That helps the algorithms help us grow. I've had the domain for a while, and I have to be honest, as I mentioned before, video editing is not my thing. I'm not that good at it. So I took a while to really get the show off and running, but I'm so thankful to all of you community because since January, I've really been focusing on using more video. And yes, of course, you can hear this on audio on all the major audio release places, you'll hear the show as well. But I've really been working on doing that on video too. I think there's something community building about us being able to chat like this. And so please subscribe if you're on YouTube. Uh, we've grown the show almost um, over 100% since I really started focusing it on in January and would love to keep growing it. There's some magic numbers that these different algorithms make you hit before they really start getting it out to the larger community. And I do hope that we can get to a larger community because there's so many people suffering from autoimmune and they don't realize they have it. And if they just have a little bit of knowledge, they can take control of their life. They can know they're not alone and be part of a supporting community such as ourselves here. And thank you for being part of the community. And as I always sign off, have a great week, whatever your adventures. And yes, be sure and have some adventures because that's what makes life so sweet. And get out there and enjoy your life. I'll see you next week. Enjoy. The information provided on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio, including the websites understandingautoimmune.com and lifeinterruptedradio.com, plus social media, is for educational purposes only. What you read, hear, and see on the Autoimmune Hour, Understanding Autoimmune, and Life Interrupted Radio, and its websites, and other media outlets is based on experience only. The information should never be used for any legal, diagnostic, or treatment purposes.